few years ago. When Kaufman took the baton from his friend and predecessor in the 6th Congressional District, Tom Tancredo, it was a differently drawn and much more conservative 6th. It was a much more conservative Mike Kaufman. As the 6th District became more moderate, so did Kaufman. Not enough so, says Andrew Romanoff, who knows something of the necessity to shift in order to connect with voters. He moved into the 6th Congressional District just before he announced he was running, and he's offering voters a much more moderate set of views than when he ran to the left of Democratic Senator Michael Bennett in 2010. From the left and the right, Kaufman and Romanoff meet in the middle in one of America's most closely contested races, the race to represent Colorado's 6th Congressional District. Live from the Nine News Studios in Denver, this is Decision 2014, the race for Congress. Moderated by Kyle Clark and Brandon Ritterman. Good evening. Let's get right to it. Our audience has agreed to hold its applause, to refrain from hooting and or hollering for the entirety of our 30-minute debate, except for in this one moment when we invite our entire studio audience to join us in welcoming Congressman Mike Kaufman and his challenger, Andrew Romanoff. A brief note on the rules of the debate established ahead of time with the campaigns. One minute responses to questions, some of which will be directed to both candidates, some simply to one candidate, redirects and rebuttals at my discretion and the discretion of my colleague Brandon Ritterman. We'll have a short answer section as well. Candidates will also be allowed to pose one question to their opponent and we will have closing statements. We have not shared the questions or the topics with the candidates or campaigns ahead of time. And before we get started, one last note, we should disclose here that Mr. Romanoff previously worked as a political analyst at Nine News. Let's get going. Gentlemen, let's start with the big story today. The U.S. Supreme Court has green-lighted same-sex marriage in a number of states, including here in Colorado. Congressman Kaufman, you're on the record opposing such marriages. Mr. Romanoff, you support them. So let's dig deeper than that. First to you, Congressman. Is there a danger for conservative Republicans like yourself who, over time, have found themselves now squarely at odds with American public opinion and some would say the course of history? Well, I'm a legislator. Uh, I'm not uh, a member of the judiciary, and, and the courts have spoken. And I respect the decision of the courts. Mr. Romanoff, should Americans who oppose same-sex marriage on religious grounds be forced to participate in such ceremonies and facilitate marriages between same-sex couples? Do you believe in any kind of freedom of conscience provision? Well, I certainly support the First Amendment, which gives the freedom of religion to institutions in America. But what I think all Americans ought to ask themselves, uh, including Congressman Kaufman, is this. Uh, if a friend or a loved one, and I'm speaking here of personal experience because I have a cousin who's gay, uh, and I think we all know someone uh, who is, shouldn't they have the right to marry a partner? Uh, shouldn't we extend full equality under the law to all Americans? It's not enough simply to suggest uh, I'm part of the legislative branch when the fact is uh, Congress has sought to outlaw marriage equality. I'm glad today the court has allowed marriage equality to advance across the nation. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. And I'm glad Mr. today Romanoff, is a victory. You have a, a few a seconds left if you'd like to directly answer the question, which is, do you believe in any type of freedom of conscience provisions? Well, I'm not interested in telling a religious institution uh, what it should do, but I do believe uh, in full equality under the law. Thank you. All right. I have a question for both of you on what could arguably be described as issue number one. Um, what is the one biggest thing, quite simply, Congress could do now to promote job growth, and how would you help get it done? And we'll start with you, Andrew. Well, first, Congress ought to stop providing tax breaks to companies that ship jobs overseas. Congressman Kaufman has voted repeatedly to offer tax breaks to companies that do that. At our first debate, Congressman, you said you couldn't remember having cast such votes, so I provided you and the rest of the audience a list of those votes in our very second debate. Uh, the truth is, instead of subsidizing job losses, we ought to use that money to rebuild our infrastructure, to put more Americans back to work here at home, repairing our roads and our bridges. That's a better way to create good middle-class jobs here in Colorado and across the United States. All right. Mr. Kaufman? Well, you're distorting my record exactly like you did uh, to Senator Bennett. No, no difference in, in 2010, but you distorted his record, and the Denver Post called you out for it in an editorial and said that your attacks were misleading, uh, and they were below the belt, and I don't think it's any different now. Uh, Where did I get you? Here, here, so let me talk about what you know uh, that I've done. Uh, you know uh, that I fought uh, to...
cut the red tape uh, that is strangling small business and hurting their ability to, to, to promote jobs and grow this economy. You know that I work with Senator Bennett uh, across the aisle uh, for the aerospace industry here in Colorado uh, to change export control laws so that they, we, we can grow jobs uh, at home. And you know that I fought for pro-growth tax reform to, to end credit, special interest credits and deductions in exchange for a lower marginal rate to make American business more uh, competitive and to grow this economy. Mr. Kaufman, one, one policy proposal, one next thing Congress could do to promote job growth. Oh, I think tax reform. I mean, I, th I fundamentally think that, that uh, it causes distortions in the economy. Uh, our tax code, I think it's, 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 it's complicated. It's a, it's a burden on business. Uh, let's take out these special interest credits and deductions. Uh, again, in exchange for a lower marginal rate, we will grow this economy. We will have more, uh, more tax revenue at the end. Right. Congressman Kaufman has but, accused me uh, of distorting his record. He did not defend the votes he cast to provide tax breaks for companies that ship jobs overseas. You didn't hear such a defense. You heard a continuation of personal attacks, but that doesn't make your record any better, Congressman. Again, just distorting my record. Uh, the, the fact is, the biggest issue that is causing jobs to move overseas uh, is the U.S. tax code in the fact that we are unique uh, in the world uh, in that U.S. businesses abroad pay the taxes in the host country and unlike any other country when they try to repatriate those the, the, that revenue back to the United States to create jobs and economic opportunities here they're taxed again. That is the biggest issue that's driving uh, jobs overseas. I, th I think I make that three rebuttals. We're going to move on to the next question here. Uh, and this one's specifically for you, Mr. Kaufman. Um, you've renounced your past support of personhood initiatives, but say you are still a pro-life candidate. What do we expect from you as a pro-life member of Congress, if not supportive anti-abortion policies? Well, I just think that, that personhood is, is simply too broad. Uh, and I think there ought to be exceptions. Uh, and, and I think there's, there, there's a balance, and I support that. But do you, you still support anti-abortion policy? I'm pro-life, and I'm proud of that. I think his question was, what does that mean, practically speaking, as a member of Congress? What would you do, therefore, as well, someone who's pro-life? Well, I've certainly voted uh, for a bill that, that uh, provides an exemption for the first 20 weeks, and then provides an exception after 20 weeks for ra rape, incest, life of the mother. I've consistently uh, voted against uh, uh, Medicaid funding for abortion, with the exception of uh, rape, incest, life of the mother. That question was directed to Congressman Kaufman, so the next question is for Mr. Romanoff. In this race and in your last one in 2010, you've spoken about the corrupting influence of PAC money. You are refusing to accept it. Of course, during your rise to power in the Colorado House, you both accepted PAC money and you had your own PAC. So I'm curious how it is that this PAC money has corrupted your opponents, both Democrats and Republicans, but never corrupted you. Well, what I've suggested throughout this campaign is that the influence of special interests has corrupted the system. I have not suggested that you can trace a particular vote Congressman Kaufman or anyone else has cast to a particular contribution they've expect, expected from a political action committee. But it's pretty obvious that special interests wouldn't be giving so much money to both uh, parties in Congress if they didn't get anything from anyone in return. Uh, the question I think for all of us, not just candidates, but for Americans is, do we want to be part of the solution or do we want to continue to be part of the problem? Uh, I've stepped up, I've drawn a line. I recognize it's easier to take shots at somebody uh, who tries to be part of the solution and offer no solutions of your own. Uh, but the truth is, this system is never, ever going to change unless somebody steps up and tries to change it. That's what I'm doing in the course of this campaign. And I should tell you, that comes at considerable expense. Since we're not taking PAC money, we're asking people to step up instead. Uh, and the good news is, more than 15,000 people have. They've enabled us to outraise Congressman Kaufman and every other congressional challenger in America. We appreciate both of you gentlemen staying on time and abiding by the rules that you agreed to earlier. We appreciate that. We're now going to go into a short answer question. Some of these are yes or no questions. Some of them call for a little bit more extrapolation, so uh, you should know when you hear it. So uh, let's get going with those. <laughs> and I've got the first one, uh, and it is this. What single issue does Congress spend too much time and energy arguing about, Mr. Romanoff? <laughs> well, Congress does nothing but argue. Uh, look, uh, the truth is, uh, if Congress would simply uh, do its job, balance a budget, solve a problem, pass a bill, or even live under the rules it imposes on the rest of the country, I think it would have a lot more confidence from the American people. Is there one issue you think is overhyped? That, co that has consumed too much of Congress's time? Yeah, that's a non-issue, that we spend time and energy talking about. That's really a non-issue. I think Congress spends a great deal of time deciding who should get the credit. And as Harry Truman once said, it's amazing how much work you can get done if you don't care who gets the credit.
Right. All right, I think we've sussed out our question now. What's the issue, Congressman Kaufman, that Congress spends too much time and energy talking about that's not a real issue? Oh, certainly naming post offices. <laughs> you know, but I think, uh, uh, you know, I'm focused on uh, reaching across the aisle and finding solutions. And so uh, I'm proud of my record uh, on veterans' issues, on making sure that this nation uh, uh, honors the obligations uh, uh, to our veterans on, on the Armed Services uh, Committee and on small business. And so I bring that background to the Congress and, and get, have been able to get things done. All right, so that was kind of a, a meaty first round of the short answers. We'll try to, we'll do better with the questions and you'll do better with the answers from here on out. This is an easy one. Congressman Kaufman, can you name a Democrat you voted for? A uh, Democrat that I voted for? Yep. When I, I think I was a, a lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps uh, overseas, I voted for Anderson for president. Ouch, that hurts. That's an, uh, I can't remember his first name. You're talking about 80 against Reagan? Yeah. I don't know that he was a Dem, but okay, all right. Um, no, it was an independent. Oh, it was so, an independent. So yeah, he was not the, he was not the, uh, the, the Fred, establishment Republican. Yeah, all yeah. right, very good. Uh, Mr. Romanoff, a Republican that you have voted for? Uh, no, I can't recall. Okay. All right. Uh, when was the last time you fired a gun, and can you tell us what kind, Mr. Romanoff? Gosh, I think in high school uh, uh, we had uh, rifle practice. Right. Mr. Kaufman? Uh, expert with the M16, sharpshooter with uh, the 45 and 9 millimeter, and the last time uh, I, I think I fired a pistol at a practice range probably about six months ago. Everything going on in the Jefferson County School District these days has us thinking about the issue of civil disobedience and its, our role, and its role in our society. I'm curious, Congressman Kaufman, have you ever engaged in civil disobedience, knowingly broken a law to make a point? You know, I have not, uh, but I respect those throughout history that have uh, in, in the area, certainly of civil rights. Mr. Romanoff. No. All right. Um, what are the last two books you read, Mr. Romanoff? Uh, I'm reading a book right now called uh, The Unwinding, and it traces uh, really the collapse of the institutions that have strengthened the middle class. It's, uh, you don't have to read the book. You can watch Congress to find out what happens if you privatize Social Security or dismantle Medicare or make higher education uh, more expensive, uh, but uh, it's a terrific read. And prior to that, two books? Uh, prior to that, um, I read a book um, uh, it's uh, difficult in the course of a campaign to find much time for reading, um, uh, but I read uh, a book called um, A Theory of Justice. All right. Mr. Kaufman? Oh, gosh. Uh, the last one was uh, a, a book by uh, former Secretary uh, Robert Gates, and then prior to that, ouch, let me think. I read so much every day. But, but in terms of books, uh, oh, it, it, it was a history book about Western civilization. I can't recall the exact title. To be fair, two very busy men this time of year. True enough. And um, should Congress grant states like Colorado a blanket exemption from federal laws against marijuana within our borders, Mr. Kaufman? Sure. Uh, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm a conservative when it comes to reading the Constitution. I believe it's an issue of interstate commerce. And uh, although I didn't support, did not vote for uh, the initiative uh, as, the rep as a representative for the state of Colorado. I've been advocating for that position in terms of uh, making sure that federal law comports with, with state law. Amendment 68 nope. would allow casinos to... Oh, I'm sorry, we I didn't apologize. Get I, I preempted you, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, a blanket exemption, no. Uh, Congress ought to allow uh, marijuana uh, companies in Colorado, businesses that engage in uh, marijuana sales to use the interstate banking system. I want to make sure that we don't uh, drop our guard and allow the drug trade uh, to prey uh, on children. I was chomping at the bit for my horse racing question. <laughs> 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 Amendment 68 would allow casino style gambling. I, I said no noise. Uh, would allow casino style <laughs> gaming at Arapahoe Park in Aurora. Curious, do you support Amendment 68, Mr. Romanoff? No. Mr. Kaufman? No. Okay. All right. That does it for our short answer section. Uh, we're gonna go back to some individual and questions for both of you. Um, Mr. Romanoff, you've cast yourself as a fiscal hawk during this campaign and rightly pointed out that while you're in the state legislature, you didn't have a choice but to pass a balanced budget. But when have you actually had to prove your desire for fiscal restraint as opposed to being forced by the law? Sure, well, in the state house, we had a lot of folks who argued in favor of automatic spending increases uh, as required by the Constitution. What I suggested was the Constitution is not uh, the best place to put our budget on automatic increases of autopilot. Uh, that was a mistake I think some folks on the left made, uh, and we relaxed it. 
uh, in my, on my watch, we brought Democrats and Republicans together. As you said, um, bal balancing the budget in Colorado is not just a good idea. Uh, it's the law, but it does require us to make some tough decisions. We were willing, uh, unlike folks in Congress, to make those decisions without balancing the budget on the backs of the middle class. And this is, to me, the real distinction in this race. The budget plan that Congressman Kaufman supported would allow millionaires lavish tax breaks while forcing middle class families to pay more. Hard to understand if you meet with folks, as I've done throughout the 6th District, who are struggling, why you believe uh, those middle class families aren't paying enough and why millionaires need to pay less. Are you just running the same campaign that you ran against Senator Bennett? Uh, no exception. Are you still the same candidate? Uh, it takes courage uh, to balance the budget in, in Washington, D.C. And so I've cast some tough votes to do so. This is a nation of $17 trillion of debt, and it's unsustainable, and it takes courage to, to, to make cuts in the budget. And I think it's absolutely gutless for you to say you're for a balanced budget and then, and then not show what path you're going to do to get there, not show what cuts you're going to do to get there. The best answer you have is I'm going to strengthen the IRS. Uh, that's the best answer. I mean, you don't show your math. You don't show your homework. And, and the fact is I voted for uh, a balanced budget over a period of 10 years that does modest uh, cuts in the budget, and you've squealed about every single one. And I'm, I'm, you know, it's just absolutely gutless, and you need the courage to step forward and talk about what programs you're gonna cut. What Congressman Coffin has done with his personal tax, I'd actually like to answer the question I think he posed at some point. How do you balance the budget? Because this is a real difference in this race. Uh, and in my view, the best way to balance the budget is to grow the economy, to put more Americans back to work. Every $100 billion increase we see in GDP generates another $12.6 billion in federal revenues. You're right, Congressman. I do think we ought to crack down on tax evasion. I don't know why you would want to let corporations or the wealthiest individuals in America you off the hook. I don't know why you would want to let drug companies off the hook instead of negotiating deeper discounts in the price of pharmaceuticals. How do you get the rest of the way to the balanced budget? I, I think uh, with, without some of the personal attacks, that is the base question there. So how do you get the rest of the way? Yeah, let me lay out the math, uh, if I can. Uh, eliminating duplicative programs would save $45 billion over the next five years. Uh, that's the GAO's estimate. Uh, collecting unpaid taxes, not increasing tax rates, but just collecting the obligations American corporations and individuals already owe, uh, would generate, by some estimates, $450 billion per year. Allowing Medicare to negotiate deeper discounts in the price of pharmaceuticals would generate $155 billion of savings over 10 years. Growing the economy, I suggested, uh, would generate about $12.6 billion for every $100 billion increase we in GDP. Some of the, you, you, some you ask that, a, a spending increase. That. Every solution you have involves more spending, more regulation, and more taxes. And for you to claim now that you're a fiscal conservative is an out-and-out -out fraud. You know, using all these words uh, over and over again doesn't make them true. It doesn't make your accusations any true. Frankly, Congressman, it just discourages people from voting. Maybe that's your goal. Uh, the truth is the math works. Uh, what doesn't work is a plan like Congressman Kaufman's that forces middle class families to pay more, that forces seniors to pay thousands of dollars more per year in out-of-pocket costs by dismantling Medicare, uh, that privatizes Social Security, that increases the cost of higher education. That's exactly the wrong way to balance the budget, the wrong way to grow the economy, and the wrong way to strengthen I, the middle class. I think we class. can see the, uh, the clear line of delineation here, so I want to move on. Congressman Kaufman, last year's government shutdown. You were widely praised for breaking with GOP leaders and calling for a vote on a clean resolution that would allow the government to reopen. But then you had an opportunity to join with Democrats to force such a vote, and you chose not to. So isn't there a difference between saying you're for bipartisanship and actually doing the hard work of bipartisanship? Well, first of all, uh, I passed the last bill before the, the partial shutdown uh, that exempted all military personnel and their families uh, from, from any impact uh, uh, of the shutdown. Secondly, I think it was both parties were at fault. Uh, it was about a spending bill. Washington has a spending problem. Uh, and, and third, when I saw that there weren't negotiations, I stepped forward publicly and said uh, that, that this has to end and let's move forward. All right, a uh, question for both of you. Do you support the state's new law allowing immigrants without legal status in the country to receive, receive a driver's license in Colorado? And what do you think of the state's rollout of that program? I'm not, l let me tell you, we have, uh, I think the problem with Washington, D.C. Uh, is it tries to do uh, too much, and as a result, doesn't do very many things very well. And so I'm going to leave it up to the state of Colorado to make the decision on that. No opinion on Colorado's no. law? Okay. Mr. Romanoff? Well, I think the rollout was really badly managed, that's obvious, but I support the proposal for the same reason that the law enforcement community of Colorado does, because they believe uh, it will improve public safety if we know who's driving uh, and make sure that we can identify them. 
Uh, gentlemen, we just have a brief amount of time before we get to the portion where you're able to ask one another questions, and I have a feeling that you're both eager to do that. <laughs> so let me ask you just a brief answer, a sentence. Why do you think so many people hate Congress, and what's the number one thing you could do about it? Mr. Romanoff. We've got some evidence, I suppose, on this stage, but the main reason I think so many Americans are disenchanted with Congress is because they see uh, politicians in Washington who aren't fighting for them. Uh, they are trying to concentrate all the benefits at the very top and allow the middle class uh, to suffer. Uh, when I get to the U.S. House of Representatives in January, I will do everything in my power to grow the economy by strengthening the middle class, by ensuring equal pay for equal work, by advancing our transition to a clean energy economy, uh, and uh, by making higher education more affordable, which is the real ticket to the middle class. Not by cutting Pell Grants, not by allowing interest rates on student loans to double, as Congressman Kaufman has done, and not by opposing common sense measures like I the Lilly Ledbetter sure Fair Congressman Pay Act. Kaufman does get equal time on this question before we go to asking questions of one another. Why do so many people hate Congress, and what's the number one thing you can do about it? Well, I'm in a group called No Labels. Uh, it, it is members of Congress who have come together, Republicans and Democrats, uh, who want to bridge the partisan divide in Washington, D.C. And I hope that that group grows. Uh, but I'm proud to be a, a part of that. And I've been able to demonstrate, to be able to reach across the aisle and, and find solutions to some of the really important challenges that, that have been before Congress. Uh, I was a part of the, the reform uh, for the Veterans Administration that the President signed into law on August 8th. Uh, I, in fact, just passed a reform uh, measure from the House, a uh, unanimous vote in the House Veterans Affairs Committee and by unanimous consent on the House floor uh, to reform the construction proce uh, practices for the Veterans Administration so we can get our hospital built here in Aurora, Colorado and the other hospitals across the country. That's the kind of bipartisanship we need in Washington, D.C. We need more of it. I think that's roughly equal time. An opportunity to ask questions of one another. We've asked you to limit the questions to about 20 seconds or so to allow for uh, time for a response. Mr. Romanoff, your question. Uh, Congressman, why did you vote for a budget that allows millionaires lavish tax breaks while forcing middle class families to pay more? Well, what it does is it, d it does away with special interest reductions. Uh, in order to have a lower marginal rate uh, to, to benefit uh, essentially all businesses and help grow this economy uh, and, and, and benefit the middle class through increasing jobs and economic opportunities. Congressman Kaufman, your question for Mr. Romanoff. Sure. Um, I think uh, three weeks ago you were for uh, a public option, you were for uh, a government run health care system, and I understand uh, three weeks ago you, you changed. And now you're just for Obamacare. And so being for Obamacare, I want to ask you a question. Would you repeal, uh, vote to repeal the individual mandate in Washington, D.C. if you were elected? This is what no labels look like. Uh, I wonder what, what a label would be. Uh, look, the truth is we ought to be fixing the Affordable Care Act, not simply repealing it and allowing insurance companies to discriminate against families on the basis of pre-existing conditions or charging women more than men uh, or throwing people off the rolls when they get sick. Uh, that doesn't make health care more affordable, uh, and it certainly doesn't make it more secure. What we need instead is for Democrats and Republicans to take on the insurance industry, hold them accountable, lower rates, and help more families get access to the care they need. So the answer is no. Uh, I just gave you the answer, Congressman. No, you didn't. And unfortunately, <laughs> I haven't gotten any answer. answers from this Congressman. Give you so the answer is no. no so you will not repeal uh, the individual mandate. Uh, we have time for one more question here, and we haven't hit this topic yet, so I'll get it. Do either of you actually think your opponent has it wrong when it comes to ISIS, or can we put that to bed as a campaign issue that differ differentiates the two of you in this campaign? Mr. Kaufman? I don't know. You know, I tell you what. Um, well, I'm proud of my military service. I had my first overseas assignment uh, in 1972 with the United States Army, and I came home from my last assignment uh, in 2006 with the United States Marine Corps, uh, where I worked in Iraq, where I volunteered uh, to work in the western Euphrates River Valley uh, in, an, in an area that has now fallen to ISIS. And so I think at the end of the day uh, that there is no solution uh, absent a political solution uh, whereby the, we got to pressure uh, the Shia-dominated uh, government in Iraq uh, out of Baghdad uh, to reach out to the Sunnis, uh, and if they feel that they have a path uh, into that government, uh, I believe that, that we can prevail uh, ultimately and defeat ISIS. Uh, to be clear, we want to give you equal time. Uh, Congressman Kaufman didn't answer the question, which is whether or not there's a difference between where you stand on ISIS. Is there any daylight here? Not in the answer I just heard. Look, this may be the one area tonight where we actually agree. Uh, we recognize, all Americans should, uh, that ISIS represents a grave threat, not yeah, just yeah. to the security of the Middle East, uh, but to U.S. security interests as well. Here's the uh, difference. 
The difference uh, is this. Can I finish the answer? Please allow Mr. Romanoff. It's, it, it's only in Washington that you get interrupted again uh, for trying to agree with your opponent. Yeah. Uh, the truth is what we need uh, is a coalition that includes not only our NATO allies, uh, but Arab nations as well. We ought to recognize that ISIS as a, a terrorist organization uh, is not uh, a, an entity that you can negotiate with, not a threat that you can contain. It's a threat that has to be eliminated. Uh, I'm glad that the administration is building a coalition around the world, but I recognize that the U.S. remains the indispensable nation. So it appears well, that on that I, you, guys, you guys agree, if perhaps not completely agreeably. We will now go to the closing statements. Each candidate will have 90 seconds in turn. We flipped a coin earlier. Uh, Mr. Romanoff correctly selected heads, I believe, and deferred. Congressman Kaufman, the floor is yours. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Channel 9, uh, for uh, sponsoring this opportunity to present uh, our views uh, to, to the voters of the 6th uh, Congressional District. I'm very proud of my record. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of my record uh, being the only uh, member of Congress to serve in both Iraq wars, uh, being the only member of the Colorado, Colorado delegation to have served uh, in the military, to bring that experience uh, to the Congress of the United States, uh, to the Armed Services Committee, uh, where I've been able to shape policy uh, to make sure that we maintain a military that is second to none, while at the same time going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Pentagon brass to make sure we cut uh, waste out of that, that budget. To, to serve as a leader, uh, a national leader on veterans' issues, to make sure that this nation honors its obligations to the men and women that have sacrificed so much for this nation and to, have, and to put forward uh, reforms uh, that are now passed into law. Uh, and lastly, uh, as a former small business owner, uh, where I learned how to uh, balance a budget, need a payroll, and run an organization uh, efficiently enough to make a profit. Quality is not readily found in Washington, D.C. Uh, that I'm able to bring that experience into the Congress of the United States to, to fight to cut the regulatory red tape that is strangling our small businesses and hurting their ability to create jobs and grow this economy. And so I'm very proud of my, uh, my uh, work in the Congress, as, as well as being a, a member of uh, uh, no labels, uh, that Republicans and Democrats who have come together to bridge that partisan divide. And I ask for your vote on uh, November 4th. Thank you, Congressman. Mr. Romanoff. Uh, thanks again uh, to Channel 9 and to the audience here. Uh, and to Congressman Kaufman, I respect your service as I've conveyed throughout this uh, campaign. It's going to be very difficult in Washington, however, uh, to forge common ground from the kind of scorched earth campaigns we've seen, even just tonight. What we need in Washington right now, more than anything, are men and women of goodwill in both parties who are more interested in solving problems than just pointing fingers or picking fights. The biggest problem we've got right now uh, is the struggles so many families in our district are facing uh, to stay or join the middle class. Unfortunately, they have a congressman, we have a congressman uh, in this district who is making that problem worse. What we need instead uh, is an effort to make higher education more affordable, not more expensive. We need an effort to ensure equal pay for equal work instead of subjecting women in this country to 78 cents on the dollar for that earned by a man. And what we awfully <laughs> truly need uh, is to advance our transition to a clean energy economy by reducing our reliance on fossil fuel and accelerating our research and development in sun, wind, biomass, and geothermal energy sources. You can't get there uh, if you deny uh, the nature of climate change. The good news is we are creating thousands of good middle class jobs right here in Colorado by taking that approach. And we need to do the same in Washington, D.C. That is exactly what I'll do when I get there in January with your help. Mr. Romanoff, thank you. We hope that everyone at home will join us for the next debate in our series and our final debate coming up Thursday live at 7 p.m. on Channel 20, our gubernatorial debate live from CSU. Wednesday, October 15th, also at 7 on Channel 20, the exclusive Denver TV debate in the Senate race between Democratic Senator Mark Udall and Republican challenger Congressman Cory Gardner. And please join us tonight for 9 News at 9 and 10 for detailed analysis of what we have seen and heard here tonight. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you for being here. Good job.